has temptation attempted to trick you? How has temptation said, Joyce, come on, can't you see that mountain's too high? Wouldn't you like to sit down? Your friends are all at the beach right now having a cocktail, right? <laughs> come on. There had to be days like this, right? Or moments for sure. 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 And I go through those moments while on the mountains and before, because, you know, you climb your mountains even before going on the expedition. It's the training time. And the training time is, you know, sacred. This is your time where you are really climbing the mountain. For those guests who've just joined us, we're with Dr. Joyce Azam. She's in the Cedar Forest of Lebanon. She's climbed seven peaks. She's one of the top mountaineers of the world. And she's just been explaining one of her incidents on uh, Mount Everest, which was a traumatic experience for her where she almost lost it. And she was explaining how she was able to use her mind, return back to her training, to the simulation of remembering how to be in the moment and breathe and get herself out of that danger because otherwise um, she might not have made it off the mountain. Dr. Joyce, just, just for our listeners out there, can you tell us what got you interested to climb the seven peaks of the world? I mean, did you go to a job fair and the, like, you know, there's a McDonald's and there's other companies looking for workers and there was like a, a mountaineer shop. How did you possibly get this idea? So I'm a very, you know, like normal girl who was born in Lebanon during the Lebanese civil wars. We are a family, like a very modest family, five children. I'm number four. So where I was born, I didn't have really the permission to, to dream, but also the war stole my dreams. Like this is the cost of, um, you know, surviving a war as a child, because it really, like it really trains you to survive and not have more than you should. You should work, go to school, and then, I mean, go to school, sorry, get your, I mean, degree, start working, make money, have children. So, and, and in all this system, I didn't have the chance to meet the mountains. And one day, a friend, I was, uh, I was around 20 years old, and a friend of mine said, come join us for a hike. I mean, I, I mean, I have a long story with sports and I, I really couldn't really run when I was eight or 10 and I trained myself. It's, we, we, we can go back to that part. But just to say how I met the mountain, I went into to that hike. I couldn't really hike even. I mean, it was a five kilometers hike, nothing. Um, and then, but I love the nature part. So I said, okay, I'm going to train for one year to climb up to the highest you know point in lebanon the highest summit which is 3080 meters and for me it was the dream it was my dream and i remember in 2007 i uh in may 2007 i you know raised the lebanese flag on the highest uh summit in lebanon and the sense of achievement i felt in my heart and you know within me was really bigger than anything else I felt in my life. I felt achieved. I started to have more confidence in this week. Uh, you know, I mean, I was also always sliding into depression when I was younger. So na when nature came into my life, it really helped me to, uh, I don't know, to feel better, to be happier. So I love the mountains. I fell in love you know, in mountains. And this is why I started mountaineering. And I didn't have any dream of climbing the seven summits. I, I, after 2007, um, not until 2009, I went for my first uh, like high altitude climb in the Alps, Mont Blanc, and other mountains of 4,000 meters in the Alps, because I, I won the scholarship to move to Italy and do my master's degree and then my PhD. So this was also part of my life. I took the, the opportunity and went to the Alps in the long weekends. And I was, you know, living on a student budget, but I made it because, you know, when they talk about passion, what is passion? It's something that I didn't understand what's passion when I was younger. Everybody would talk. I read it. 
I listened to it in TV. I was like, what's passion? I don't have a passion. But then I figured it's something that makes you energized. Like when you do something, even if in the mountains I was feeling tired and, you know, burned and I cannot move and I come back and I'm like, you know, super, uh, I don't know, like, I, I, I'm like not, I'm tired, but I was feeling energized from inside. And this is why I chose mountains. Not until 2012, I thought about the seven summits because we don't have the first Lebanese woman in Lebanon. I mean, we don't have a woman mountaineer. And I said, wow, I have all this experience. Why not to start this project? And I, I found also that we need an idol. We need a champion, a, a woman, a female champion to look at in our society, not just because for the girls, also for the boys, because the boys also should look at women as a champion, as, you know, a strong woman, like women also are strong and they can be mountaineers because mountains and the mountain world are usually a man world usually. And it's not just Lebanon, it's all over the world. So I thought it's a great message to, you know, send to these kids and uh, to my, uh, you know, community and society. So this is why I started all this and I went through the seven summits. Wow. And I, I read also, but because you've climbed these seven the peaks of the, the highest peaks of the world, uh, even though uh, uh, Mount Everest, which we have a photo of you there on, on the top screen, uh, was, was one of your greatest victories. I, I think that's what I heard you say. But today, you're also, when, you're, when your feet are back down to earth, um, you're doing a lot of uh, philanthropic work. You're raising awareness for women's empowerment. You're a role model for children, and you go and speak to schools and to groups. Um, tell us yes. about that. So it was all by, um, like, an opportunity. You know, like, you start doing something. I didn't think about it really to be, like, uh, a role model for these uh, boys and girls. But then, uh, you know, being in this position, I have a responsibility. I have a responsibility to the youth in Lebanon and in, in, in the region. Um, and so I started this uh, working as, a, I mean, volunteering, actually, as a child protection advocate with Himaya NGO. And uh, Himaya NGO, they uh, protect children from any abuse, any kind of uh, abuse, physical, sexual, or even, you know, like uh, uh, psych psychological abuse. And I loved to work with them. Why? Because I feel I relate to them because the war stole my dreams. And then I got them back with the help of the mountains. Because as I always say, mountains are my mentors. You know, they made me strong to face all these um, adversity in my uh, own life and to create op my own opportunities. And I thought I can maybe, you know, motivate these children specifically to protect their dreams and, you know, tell them that you can protect their, your dreams. You can uh, uh, make your dreams reality. And, uh, and now, because after the Beirut explosion, there's many children in Beirut, they are traumatized. And I'm doing weekly these motivation uh, workshops uh, where I go meet the children with Himaya, for sure. Himaya team, they have like a, a field, um, uh, you know, they, they got a tent and uh, a place where they um, uh, like invite the kids and the children of the area. Like they, they have four places in uh, Beirut and they invite the kids to come and they help them, they support them psychologically to overcome the trauma and I'm helping through that. So it's a wonderful thing because it's helping me also to move forward, to be honest. It was so hard for me the last uh, two weeks because I also went through all the traumas and the PTSD, it's real. Uh, I went through all the traumas of my own childhood uh, like 30 years ago. It's crazy. Huh? It's real. And it, how it hits you again. So it's helping me. I have this part and then the woman empowerment, empowerment it follows uh, with also different uh, projects and uh, such as climbing Kilimanjaro with three teenage girls uh, back in 2017 with a project called Yes 
she can and much more projects. That's amazing. And this, yes, she can. Uh, I really like that. Is that, uh, do you have sponsors uh, from any other organizations or corporates? How do you, how do they fund these programs? So um, this part was the hardest for me. Uh, actually, I found sponsors from Lebanon for the past, I, I mean, four or five years. I was always sponsored by banks or telecommunication companies uh, for whom I'm super grateful because they believe in um, athlete women. <laughs> like a female athlete are not so many in the region, actually, not just in Lebanon. And um, we have a lot to say and it's important uh, to you know, like make records. It's not just the ego part that you are the first or nothing, but it's the part where you can have a voice and you can use it in order to motivate um, others uh, so they can also achieve their dreams. Uh, so now it's really hard to sponsor these projects because of the economic crisis that we are going through in Lebanon and the explosion. Uh, and all the focus now is on helping Beirut uh, to overcome this, uh, I mean, uh, uh, really hard uh, times and the children of Beirut. So all the fund funding are going to Himaya at the moment in order to help each other, you know, to overcome this trauma. You know, you, you mentioned this word financial crisis. Um, what I've understood is that there are people there who've lost their life savings because they can't get their monies out of the banks. It's going to be yes. a complete, complete financial and, failure and bankruptcy of the country. Yes, and one of them, my parents, for for instance. Um, I mean, I come from uh, you know middle class, lower middle class, and we are workers, and we worked hard in our life to make a good life, and now we cannot. You know, um, our money is locked in the banks, and. It's really a hard time for everyone in Lebanon. I hope it will get better because um, it's a political thing. And uh, we were always, you know, like, in, in a, like going through instability. But uh, yeah, I mean, th th I don't know what to say here because I don't really, um, I, I don't wanna talk about the political part I rather talk about what I can do in the power I have as a citizen, as a champion, national champion, and as a person who has a lot of big dreams and she wants them to <laughs> become reality because I have more dreams than the seven summits. I'm, I'm sure. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get you to reveal any of those today. Yeah, I can. Possible show, but... We would certainly be one of the like to be the first outlet to uh, handle your breaking news. <laughs> so my breaking news is, is actually the seven summits were always my dream, but I always said I want to get the Explorers Grand Slam. And what is, what is it about the Explorers Grand Slam? It is the seven summits plus crossing or traversing to the two poles. So you go from coast to pole, South Pole, and then coast to North Pole. And there's only three female who did this Explorers Grand Slam in the world. And one American, one Nor Norwegian, and one British. So I am really training at the moment. I stopped the last two weeks because I couldn't, I wasn't able uh, neither mentally or psychologically. Uh, but this is why during the COVID-19, I moved back to my place in the mountains where I always train and I'm training, I'm moving tires, you know, behind me to start um, training for the poles. And I'm looking also for sponsors for that big dream. And I think a lot of people would say, now, now you are looking for sponsors to make such a sports uh, record. It's not the, the time. And I feel it is exactly the time to do this because we cannot stop in front of adversity. And I mean, we can have obstacles, but it's up to us to decide what to do with this obstacle, to turn it to an opportunity and, you know, uh, move forward or to make us stop and 
you know, like hit the wall and not uh, move. I, I, I like to say one thing. I always <laughs> uh, say it to my friends and I always hit the wall, right? Like, because a lot of my friends survived with me the seven years with, with the seven summits because it was really hard to fund, you know, like get the funds for them. It cost a lot, you know, these remote uh, expeditions. And I always say I hit the wall and I start, you know, like creating a small crack in the wall and then a small opening and then I create a small window where I can get through. And this is how I always do it. <laughs> There's no walls in my life. It's always um, the obstacles are always there in our life to teach us. I don't know, a lesson or to show us something beautiful in life in order you know, to overcome this obstacle behind it. There's always a lot of good things we can learn and benefit in our life. And this is my life story. Well, I would really like to hear a little bit more about the one question I'm going to ask you now, and that is temptation. How has temptation attempted to trick you? How has temptation said, Joyce, come on, can't you see that mountain's too high? Wouldn't you like to sit down? Your friends are all at the beach right now having a cocktail, right? <laughs> come on. There had to be days like this, right? Or moments for sure. sure. Oh my God, sure. And I go through those moments while on the mountains and before, because, you know, you climb your mountains even before going on the expedition. It's the training time. And the training time is, you know, sacred. This is your time where you are really climbing the mountain. And during my, you know, uh, training before going to the mountain, I have a lot of those days like, Joyce, why you want, you have to wake up at 5.30, you know, have your coffee, go for your training, you know, like my AM training and then go back work on my because i teach at university part-time that's what i do to make my living in order to dream and make my dreams come true so it's a hustle life like it's it's a really hustle and sometimes i you know i open my and my mind would say joyce why you would this, do this you can just go do your work at university come back and sleep and live like others you know but then i just count like you know, like the um, five second rule for Mel Robbins, I always also used it. And I just count five, four, three, two, one. I, you know, step out of the bed and just do whatever I had to do, whatever I planned to do. And it's really essential to plan your whatever you want to do. Like if you have a, a mountain to climb, I prepare for this mountain for six or six months ahead with a planning. Like every day I have this training. You know, this week I have this amount of training I should do, like 12 hours, 10 hours. And this should be also with the help of a professional people. You have to have your support system. You know, you cannot do them. If not, the temptation will just eat you and will just block you and you will not move uh, towards your dream. So it's about creating your support system and uh, people who believe in you, people who are experts in what they do and get their advice and then build your plan and this is where you kill the temptation on the mountain because we already have a plan of the expedition even for two months we have a day-by-day -day plan this is easier because you know like even if the temptation would get through your mind the guide would come and it's like tomorrow we're doing this or now we have to move and you just have to move with the group and you just forget about your temptation but for sure i stayed in, on, in, in a tent at 6,000 meters or 7,000 meters during a storm and crying like, why I am here? I would rather, you know, have a hot meal, a hot meal like, you know, steak or <laughs> barbecue chicken because you, you start, you know, craving for food on these mountains. I'd rather, you know, have, you know be at the beach and have, you know, a martini. Um, but then uh, you look at the mountain and, or the mountain in front of you, you look at your goal and you say, no, I worked so hard to get there. One more day, Joyce, let's do it. Let's do it together. This is my mind telling myself. <laughs> so yes. yeah, this is how, I mean, temptation are real and they can get you. And sometimes maybe they got me, but I learned how to face them with planning, support system, and, you know, 
always work on your simulation. Simulation are very essential and they are they really um, are efficient when you are in extreme condition. They work real because you already by simulation. What do I mean? Like using the hypoxic mask during my training in the clinic in Beirut while climbing on stairs and having 20 kilograms on my backpack. This is simulation. It's like I am at 4,000 meters and climbing, but I'm, I was in Beirut. So I moved myself from Beirut to this feel and it feels real, you know, physically and mentally that I'm in the mountain or sitting in a bath of ice. Also, this is an extreme condition that I am pushing myself towards it. And this is, it's, it's not just a physical training, it's a pure mental training. Without it, you cannot face the temptation on the mountain or during, um, at least me, I mean, I'm talking about my own experience. I cannot, I couldn't actually face them with joy because it's also beautiful to live your expedition with joy and be grateful and enjoy it and have a smile on your face like I'm smiling on top of the world. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Well, Joyce, uh, so interesting to hear uh, your insights after all these amazing experiences. And because, again, digging into our show theme, Mission I'm Possible, what could you share with us that people don't know that was maybe one of your most fearful moments where you really never thought you're going to make it, where there was so much adversity, could have been danger, could have been anywhere, anything else, where you just didn't know how you would possibly get through it. Anything come to mind that you could share? Um, actually, maybe I, I shared that moment at uh, 8,400 meters. You remember uh, at, on the summit ridge, uh, where I was really about to die. I was like starting to feel numb. My body was feeling numb. And I remembered, you know, the voice of my instructor saying, Joyce, you can breathe. You know how to breathe, just breathe. And I did. Um, but I would share other than the physical part and the mountains, other than this moment, I would share another moment. And it was back in, um, around spring 2018 and i already climbed five of the seven summits and um which, which is enough i mean you could have stopped right there and go look i did my best uh it's not my rule my rule if i start a project i have to finish it at any cost this is my this is me this is how my mind you know like when you start training since you you are like 10, 13, and you are training in a way like you need to finish this one kilometer you set your mind to, you have a discipline, a kind of discipline, right? And this is a thing that helped me a lot throughout everything that happened in my life to just go through, through the adversity and get out of it just because of discipline. But what I am saying, like, I decided to do the seven summits. I really wanted to finish the seven summits. So I climbed five and we can mention them just so people can get a little bit familiar. Please, like yes. Mount Al I climbed Mount Albrus, which is the highest in Europe in 2012. And before that, I climbed Mont Blanc in 2009. Um, and then I climbed um, uh, Karsten's Pyramid uh, or Punkak Jaya, which is in Papua New Guinea and the highest in uh, uh, Oceania as a continent and then I climbed Kilimanjaro which is the highest in Africa and um, I went to Aconcagua after that in 2017 so Kilimanjaro was in 2014 and I stopped for three years because I prior to like I had a priority in my life to do my PhD which was also my dream huh? it was also my dream to do my PhD and it was a dream that I got when I was at university studying architecture at the Lebanese uh, public university. And I met this professor uh, coming from Italy. And I was like, I mean, he, he was writing PhD next to his title. And I was like, oh, wow, what is a PhD? Can you imagine? Like, I really didn't know because I'm the first PhD in my own uh, family and in our architecture faculty we didn't have PhDs we had professors like our you know like uh, uh, 
uh, teachers uh, or lecturers were just uh, master degree holders. So I wasn't exposed to this. And then like something, you know, in, like in my head, I was like, oh my God, I want to have it. I want to do a PhD. So between 2014 and 2017, I was doing that. So after I finished my PhD, back to the climbing the seventh summit and I did Aconcagua, uh, which is the highest in um, South America, Denali, one of the hardest to be honest, the highest in North America and it is in Alaska. And then I still had Vincent, which is the highest in Antarctica and Everest. And Vincent and Everest, just to, so you can know, you can Google it. They are the most expensive out of the seven. I mean, they're really most expensive. So I managed to do the others because it was, the budget was, you know, um, like um, smaller and I couldn't find a sponsor. I search and search, eight months has passed, 10 months has passed. And I was getting these offers to go to, um, you know, teach in Europe and for Lebanese going back to Europe and teaching, this is a really good, you know, uh, thing. This, this is a good offer, but I was refusing because I was a believer, like, I'm going to get these sponsors. I'm sure I'm going to raise, like, you know, I needed to raise around $260,000. It's not, you know, a small amount. And then I was about to give up. I was about to give up. And I remember, uh, like, I had, I got the offer and I was about to sign it in, in, in the Netherlands. There was a professor that I worked with when I was doing my PhD. And one day before, I received this message from uh, a guy called Henry. This guy is a kid of eight years old. And he said, Joyce, you are my hero. And I am doing this presentation for my classmate about you. Can you send me a few pictures? for sure, I was like crying and I was like, oh my God, a, an eight years old boy think that thinks that I am his hero. So what can I do more? I mean, look at Joy, look at this opportunity you have. I'm not going to Netherlands. So I <laughs> sent this email to the professor. I said, I'm not going there. And I continued for another four months where I got my uh, sponsorship for Vincent. I mean, just an eight years old boy changed my mind. <laughs> but um, he really made me remember, you know, my dream and how much it's important for me and how much it's important to continue. And I continued. So maybe I didn't tell you about a moment where I was, you know, like maybe losing my life, but it was kind of the same feeling because I remember when I was like, oh my God, I'm going to sign this uh you know contract and i'm leaving if i leave beirut that means i'm leaving my dream i cannot you know teach full time and do the training and search for sponsorship it's not doable it's not just physically possible so for me it was a moment where i was like feeling suffocating and this is something i want to share with everyone you know here listening to us and hi <laughs> everyone um it's, it's really our body can tell us a lot about what we should do or not. Because I remember when I was like, oh my God, and it's an opportunity. I, I will go work, right, in a university. But I was feeling suffocating. My gut was, you know, like you and you feel like this, like you, as your stomach is like really tight. And I didn't really understand like why. Joyce, it's an opportunity. You need, you know, you need to proceed in your life you need to go forward so this was a sign for me also to understand for the next you know situations in, in my life when I feel like this when my body reacts because our body knows a lot more um, I would stop and rethink what I'm doing next you know what I mean like this was also a learning process for me yeah we we hear that from so many achievers that I think it's something about listening to your body, learning how to listen to your body, listen, listen to the signs. So yeah. here you are, a walking, talking proof of that. That's uh, very, yeah. very insightful. Thanks for sharing that. I'm, I'm so happy to share this with you. Uh, and thank you for having me. I mean, uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to share my story with, you know, a lot of people around the world.
Well, we're grateful. And of course, for those of you who are only listening to the audio portion of this episode, uh, Joyce Asim has been sitting in the cedar forest, the forest of God in Lebanon, a sacred, protected UNESCO heritage site. Uh, she just happened to go for a little walk this morning from her house, which is only three, uh, another one and a half thousand meters from her front door. Um, and she's <laughs> been up there taking in the air and helping us uh, breathe in some new insights as what it takes to be such a a courageous woman in a country that really did not historically honor women or the whole region as a culture. And so for you to be a pioneer in sports and have the audacity to go to a bank or a telecom and say, you know, there's never been a woman do this before, but I'm going to be the first and you should believe in me. Um, I don't know. I think I've met some salespeople in my life but you had to be the best in the world to do what you did and continue to do that. My hat is off to you, Joyce. Uh, you definitely have my appreciation, admiration, and I look forward to having you reveal what other secrets you have or, or new ventures ahead. I wish the best for Lebanon and for you, for your parents and for everyone, and thank you for being such a bright light Thank you for being such an inspiration. Thank you for taking those steps that none of us had ever, ever dared to do. You dared to dream, and you keep dreaming. God bless you, Joyce Azam. Thank you very, very much. It's a pleasure to be with you today, and I hope, you know, you are welcome to come hike with me in Lebanon anytime uh, <laughs> you want. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I hope we will meet soon, and I will tell you about the, the pole traverse in the South Pole and the North Pole. I'm so looking forward for that. Wow. Can't wait to hear about it next time. Okay, Joyce, God bless. See you at the top, top of the world. Thank you very much.